Well, getting some shut-eye is one of the most important things we need for our health, but too many Aussies have trouble with it. One report has found only 7% of the population say they get a good night's rest, while almost 60% admit they find it hard to fall asleep or stay asleep during the night. Yeah, with today being World Sleep Day, it's important to remember the vital role that rest plays for our health. So with more than a third of Australians feeling dissatisfied with their sleep, is there an easy fix? Well, for more, we're joined by Sleep Health Foundation CEO, Dr Moira Junger. Uh, doctor, so nice to see you and chat to you about this on World Sleep Day. What are some of the most common issues Australians have with their sleep? Well, the most common sleep disorders are insomnia, obstructive sleep apnea. They can often coexist, actually. But what we find more commonly is that people not being able to find the time to, to sleep properly or to prioritise sleep. And on World Sleep Day, we'd love people to prioritise sleep in the same way they prioritise their work and other aspects of their health, like diet and exercise. OK, can we generalise at all with how much sleep we should be getting each night? Some people say, I can get by in four hours. Others say, I need eight hours. Why, why is it so important yeah. for our health? Yeah, well, it, it varies a lot, as you, as you just said. We recommend seven to nine hours across the 24-hour period. But we do recognise that anything between six and ten hours can be considered normal and appropriate. And it's so important for our health because it sort of underpins everything, every aspect of our physical and mental health, from our reaction times um, right through to our mood regulation and even the, you know, reducing a chance of preventing chronic health conditions later in life. Yeah. Maura, we want to ask you for some pretty quick uh, takes on some common ways that people try to get better sleep. What about wearing an ice mask and earplugs? Does that actually or an, help? Or an eye mask, yeah. What did I say? An ice mask. <laughs> I was in an ice bath the other day, so maybe that's why I did that. Sorry. An eye mask. An yeah, eye, eye mask. Well, eye mask and earplugs for sure if the light and the noise are problematic, um, particularly people who are shift workers and needing to, to, you know, to sleep at abnormal times or atypical times, for sure. OK. What about room sprays like lavender? Um, limited evidence for that, which mm -hmm. wouldn't mean that some individuals find that relaxing, but we can't say there's scientific evidence for that. I reckon that, there's a placebo effect sleep. there. The room smells good. The room thinking. smells good and puts you to sleep. What about magnesium supplements? Um, there's emerging evidence that magnesium can help with some aspects of sleep, particularly, say, restless legs, but it would only be if you're short, you know, you're running low in magnesium. So before you self-prescribe, make sure you talk to a trusted health professional before going on it. Oh, OK. What about keeping a window open for fresh air? Uh, again, personal preference for that and would depend on a few other factors like noise, the freshness of the air, um, <laughs> again, personal preference. What about technology before bed, Doctor? Is that, uh, people think that's a bad thing, but can it depend on how we use it? Yeah, I mean, we all know that um, technology can keep us awake in terms of being too engaged with it. People can lose sight of their sleepiness and tiredness. So we really do encourage people to disengage from their screens in terms of it's stimulating. But if it's something that's a podcast or something really relaxing, technology is not bad. So it's really important that we have a nuanced message about technology that definitely detox and unplug from stressful stuff and stimulating stuff. But be aware that some technology, particularly if it's meditation or you know something that's non-stimulating and calming for you, then it, then it might work. But be aware of the light and be aware of the stimulating effect. They're the two factors. Can I just ask you what you should do if you wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and can't get back to sleep? That seems to be a common complaint. Yeah, it's really important for people to realise that everyone wakes up at some point in the night, often a couple of times in an hour even. So once we, so don't look at the clock too much, don't catastrophise waking. If you've been awake for ages and you feel quite frustrated, you need to get up out of bed, do something else, wait for the sleepiness and tiredness to come. And, and you can, you know, you'll know that you'll be ready for sleep and go back to bed. Um, yeah, don't panic, don't look at the clock. Realise that waking is normal, but don't um, put up with really poor sleep and get too frustrated. Talk to a trusted person about it. Mm. Look at the Sleep Health Foundation website for more information if you're really, really concerned. But it's about, you know, prioritising it, mm. um, but knowing that it's not going to be perfect.
Maura, this could be too specific to be a widespread benefit to our viewers, but what about if you're struggling to sleep because of an Italian greyhound in the bed with his legs, spindly little legs, <laughs> well, akimbo? Let's just, let's just say any pet. Or any pet. Any pet. How any about pet. any pet? Any pet, yeah. It's not a recommendation of ours to, to, you know, <laughs> to, to sleep with your pets. However, there's a recognition that for some people there be, there's some exceptions. And in, in, <laughs> if, it's, if it's helping you to sleep better, then by all means, the Sleep Health Foundation, the Sleep World would say, you know, do that. But mostly, I think everyone would recognise that there's a lot of disruption with pets, with their movement, with their need to go to the toilet. With... So be really aware of just really prioritising your sleep. <laughs> before, um, yeah, the dogs will be fine, the pets will be fine. But, yeah, Sorry, but... Maura, we we're looking at the, uh, <laughs> the vision accompanying what you're saying there and some of these shots are borderline hilarious. Yeah, it was worth it just for the shots. Like Maura, uh, really good advice on this World Sleep Day. Thanks for your time this morning. Pleasure.